excited to have you here. It's on the way to get warm in here. I'm not sure why, uh, what happened this morning, but uh, uh, the thermostats didn't want to kick on for some reason. So uh, come together and leave your coats on, and as the service goes on, it'll it'll warm up. Trust me. Uh, maybe for several of you, you might be excited that it's this way anyway. I don't I don't know. Uh, not Brad. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, we are glad to have you this morning. Uh, if you're checking in on Facebook, I encourage you to, uh, again, share this on your page. It helps get out to, uh, to others as well. Um, we're excited to have you, uh, that, that you do share. Uh, what a blessing that is uh, with others as well. And so as we begin this morning, if you join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again this morning for an opportunity to gather in your house. And Lord, I know that it's, uh, it's cold, it's uh, slick, it's uh, um, weather-wise, it's nasty outside. But Lord, we, we thank you for the, the warmth in here, the fellowship. And Lord, we thank you for those who have joined us on Facebook this morning. And again this morning, Lord, I just pray that everything that we say and do will uh, bring glory and, and honor to you. Uh, Lord, that you will uh, receive the praises of your people. Uh, Lord, we, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, fellowship. We thank you for the opportunity to um, sing this morning, to uh, look into your word. And Lord, I just pray that in all those things that you uh, uh, do receive that glory. Lord, again this morning, we, we know that we live in a time that seems uh, uh, chaotic at best in our world. But uh, Lord, none of this has caught you by surprise. You are fully aware and fully uh, uh, a part of everything that goes on. So Lord, help us to see you. Uh, in the midst of that. Help us to trust you and uh, be guided and directed by you. So Lord, this morning as we come, we ask for your presence to be with us. Lord, uh, guide and direct us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you standing this morning as we sing every place on which your foot shall trod? Tread. 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 Well, it's trod in my notes, so. (laughs) Okay, we're going to sing this through four times. And by the fourth time, you'll know it. Okay. All right. Every place on which your foot shall tread, I have given it to you, I have given it to you. No man shall be able to stand before you. I will be with you. I will be with you. Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. shall be able to stand before you. I will be with you. I will be with you. Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Every place on which your foot shall tread, I man shall be able to stand before you. I will be with you. I will be with you. Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. Wherever you go, every place on which your foot shall tread, I have given it to you, I have given it to you. No man shall be able to stand before you. I will be with you, I will be with you. Good job. Amen. You can be seated. This morning we do have a few announcements. Uh, we have a, uh, some, some prayers to go over and then uh, we'll uh, take time to be in prayer for that as well. 
Um, Wednesday night Bible study this week, again, it's on Facebook Live uh, at 7 o'clock. It'll be session 5, which is uh, God Gives His People the Promised Land. Uh, session 5 and Volume 2, uh, books are available for that if you would like one. Uh, the North Baptist Food Pantry is from 1 to 4 on Tuesday, uh, going pretty well. Again, they encourage you to uh, think about uh, making one of those uh, birthday plates, uh, uh, kits actually, uh, for uh, them to hand out. Uh, that's been a, a blessing as well. Also for Pomona, uh, Thursday the food pantry is from 1 to 4. Uh, the blessing box is outside. Uh, if you've uh, taken a scholarship form with you, make sure they get back in today. Uh, and then the, uh, for, the, for the men, there's a, a men's retreat, which is the first weekend in May. Uh, we went several years in the past. They haven't had it for a couple years because of COVID. Uh, if you're interested in it, uh, be sure and see me. Uh, we leave on Friday, uh, the first weekend in, in March. Uh, March, I think I might have said May. The first weekend in March, um, about noon or so, and then you're back by 7 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, this year's uh, main speaker is, is Tony Evans' the son, Anthony, who played for the, the Cowboys for a while. And uh, uh, he's uh, going to be speaking about uh, some men's concerns and issues, and so it'll be a great time. It's always a good time of fellowship. Uh, the food is always good. You can't beat that. Uh, it, it's $80 if you're interested in going. Uh, let me know if you want to go, and then uh, um, we'll, we'll get set up and get uh, registered for that. Uh, anyway, let me know. Uh, registration goes through the end of January, I believe. So um, anyway, let me know on that. Uh, prayer concerns this morning. Uh, continue to pray for Emily. You see, she's not here this morning. She's had quite a, um, a battle the last couple of weeks. She has some sores on her foot, uh, and then she took a tumble this week and uh, been in now the emergency room uh, at home trying to recoup and recover, and so we, we pray for her in that sense. Uh, pray for Patty for uh, recovery and strength, and then for Sister Shirley, still uh, staying hanging in there, so we, we pray for her. Um, Baby crew, continue to pray for him, uh, just for health and strength as he grows. Things are going pretty well. Uh, just needs lots of continued prayer, not only for him, but for the family as well. Uh, baby Asher, we're praying for uh, that he can gain some weight. Uh, he's in need of that. And then baby Scarlett, uh, I've been praying for her. Uh, she had surgery, I believe it was Thursday or Friday. Uh, it was pretty... Pretty invasive for a, for a little bitty baby that was born on uh, Christmas Eve, but not as much as they thought it was going to be. So things went uh, fairly well. Uh, so continue to pray for uh, recovery for her and then for her parents as they travel back and forth and uh, uh, are part of her uh, there at the hospital. She'll stay there. Uh, Joe Brandon's not here today. He had a procedure this week to take a spot off his uh, nose, I believe, and then they had to skin graft it from over here. So he's kind of sore and recovering. Uh, I believe he's on Facebook, so uh, Joe, we're praying for you. Uh, Terry Tinnick uh, from the Pomona comes over here. Um, he had uh, more extensive ones done. He had several taken off this week, and uh, he was at the lighthouse uh, recovering, going pretty well. Continue to pray for him. Uh, Carolee, his wife, is going to have her pacemaker replaced. It was supposed to be on Monday. Uh, they've postponed that now till Thursday, uh, so pray that that can all uh, go well uh, with, their, with, with her as well, uh, recovery uh, as well. Uh, our director of missions, Danny, uh, the press chain went through yesterday. Um, Beth, his wife's brother, uh, passed away from COVID in, uh, in Wichita. Uh, so they'll be uh, doing, Danny's going to do the funeral and do some things throughout this week. So pray for them. And um, I sent through anybody that wants to send them a card, a sympathy card. There's an address coming through on the prayer chain. Uh, continue to pray for uh, Steve and Janet Green. Janet is Joe Brandle's sister. Uh, both her and Steve have some health concerns that are uh, pretty major, so uh, we want to lift them up in prayer. Uh, Cora for recovery for her leg. Just continued strength, uh, stability, and obviously she's not out and about on today uh, with the weather. Um, and our granddaughter Jessica, pray for recovery for her. Uh, also, uh, Rick Dunn, uh, which is her nephew, has a uh, unspoken prayer concern this morning. And then Stan's wife, Connie, is in ICU uh, with, with COVID up to Kansas City. Uh, we want to continue to lift up Connie and then uh, Stan as well. Uh, Keith is still not uh, feeling 100%. Uh, he doesn't have COVID, but he's really struggling with, with breathing. And so 
So we're praying for, uh, for Keith, um, praying for Darlene as well. She has uh, pneumonia in one of her lungs. Uh, pray for her and Teresa. Um, Scott Elrod has a test tomorrow for CDL, so we pray that he passes that with, uh, with flying colors. Not that he's flying, right, but that he's, uh, but that he's able to pass that and get that over. I know he, he, they said he's pretty uh, concerned about that. Uh, pray for Linda Sears with her recovery. Uh, I know she's back to work, and they've had a, a bout of COVID in their home as well. So pray for just strength and just uh, recovery for her. Uh, continue to pray for Jake uh, in the Marines. Uh, he, had, he still has an unspoken, and then as well as just uh, being away from, from family and a part of that. Uh, pray for Shannon. Um, I know uh, they said uh, a week or so ago, uh, Rick had had... Um, uh, tested positive for COVID as well, so I uh, pray for their household. Um, let's see. Oh, and then uh, I can't remember your brother's name. Yeah, Sam and Blake uh, had the had the baby this week. Uh, all is well. Are they home? And they're home, so we prayed for them. So uh, uh, Blake and Sam Anderson and baby uh, Everly is home. So continue to uh, lift them up in prayer just for uh, strength in the days to come. Um, Belinda for recovery. Um, uh, Riley Hill tested positive for um, COVID. Pat said in their school down there in Arkansas, it is just, they've shut the school down and have went virtual. Uh, there's like, uh, I don't know if it's actually this many is what he said, but it was like a thousand kids and teachers are all out. She's in a very big school down there. And so it's, uh, it's, it's a mess down there. Pat and Melissa have been able to kind of stay away from it, I think. Uh, continue to pray for for them in that sense. And then I sent through a, a prayer chain uh, for a, the four Paul family. Uh, Jean passed away this past week. Jean was really uh, a mentor of mine when I was in my younger years. Uh, he inputted a lot of, uh, of, of what I needed. Uh, I probably wouldn't be where I'm in today without, without Jean's input in my life. So it was really, he was a blessing in my life and even in our early married life and family. And I went to Mexico with him. Um, I don't know how many times, a bunch of times. And so uh, he was a, a neat guy, loved the Lord, taught Sunday school, uh, served the Lord in many capacities. And so he's actually with Jesus now. So uh, he's uh, to praise, but just pray for the family. Uh, they all know where he's at, but it's still uh, a struggle when, when we lose someone. So uh, he'll lift him up in prayer as well. So this morning, if you join me in prayer uh, as we continue on this morning. You know, Lord... Uh, we are so thankful that we have an opportunity to come to you. You know, as we we look around, we have lots of different situations and circumstances. Lord, we live in a world where uh, it seems like COVID is just uh, running rampant. Uh, Lord, we, we pray for those families that, that do have it. Uh, Lord, that you would provide strength and uh, ability for them. And we know that some of the schools in our neighboring areas are, are closed for a short period of time. And so, Lord, we pray for uh, health and strength. And, uh, Lord, I pray that... Uh, uh, this can be kind of the uh, uh, beginning of the end for that. And, Lord, that you would uh, release that uh, from not only those that have been struggling with it, but from us as a people. And, Lord, I know we have several this morning that are that are gone, uh, not because of uh, having it, but because of just being exposed. And so, Lord, we pray for uh, your guidance in their lives as well. Lord, again, we just thank you uh, that we can bring these petitions to you. We think about those those babies that are have been recently born and those that are needing uh, continued uh, healing from you. Uh, Lord, we think about those that have unspokens. Uh, Lord, we think about those that are uh, in ICU, uh, struggling with uh, just the ability to, to breathe and to uh, maneuver through a, a day. And Lord, then there's those that uh, struggle emotionally as well. And, and so, Lord, you know each and every situation. Uh, Lord, we... We know that you've created each individual being, and so you know them way better than the, uh, the doctors and the nurses can even uh, compare to. And so, Lord, we ask for your touch upon each one of these lives. Lord, not only that the individual would see, but that we would see as well. Uh, Lord, help us to continue to, to trust in you, that you would guide and direct us. Lord, we lift these names to you this morning that we had, and Lord, we're going to just trust in that uh, uh, you'll provide in only the way that you can. And Lord, you'll give us insight and understanding and direction to, to see how uh, we are to maneuver through these as well. Uh, so, Lord, we praise you. We thank you. And we lift these things to you in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name uh, over and over and over uh, for your love for us and, and how you provide. Amen. 
If you stand this morning, we're going to sing, Be Thou My Vision. Numbers chapter 13, if you have a, a Bible this morning, I encourage you to, to turn there. i got to get my grapes over here so you can see those this morning. That's going to go along with, uh, with the message. Um, and that's really, uh, be down my vision, is really uh, where we're going to be at this morning in number 13 about God being the, the vision and the direction. And, and so as you turn there, uh, we're going to be in Numbers 13, uh, verses 1 and 2. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity to uh, uh, look at this. Uh, I think this is my probably my favorite Old Testament passage. Uh, it's got great insight and direction for each one of us as you as you move forward in life, as you move forward in your relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, it, it's exciting to look at this scripture and see how it can work. Now, uh, usually I use it in one way, but this morning we're going to kind of tweak it and use it in a, a different way. Uh, this morning's message is entitled, It's Rebellion. And you're going to see that as we move forward into the end of the message, how it kind of comes about uh, to be just that. So Numbers chapter 13, uh, verses 1 and 2 uh, from the NIV. And the Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. You join me in prayer. Lord, again this morning, I'm just uh, grateful to be a part of, of what you're doing. Lord, I thank you that, uh, uh, I, I thank you first and foremost for our written word that we have this morning that we can utilize in our lives. Lord, I know uh, around the globe, not everybody has the same privilege that we have to be able to not only have your word, Lord, but uh, to read it and be a part of it on a daily basis. Uh, Lord, we're also thankful this morning for the, the living word, uh, your son, Jesus Christ, and Lord, we came through the Advent season, we, we saw the necessity, we saw the promise being fulfilled of the, the birth of your son Jesus, and Lord, he came on a mission, and that mission was to uh, give his life as a, as a sacrifice, as an offering uh, for each one of us, 
And Lord, I pray that uh, we're able to uh, receive that offering into our lives. And Lord, that it really uh, transforms us, that it makes a difference. Uh, So Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. As we look at this this morning, Lord, I pray that your uh, directive is in it. Uh, Lord, that you get said exactly what you need for the the hearts of those to hear it, whether they be in the sanctuary this morning or or through Facebook. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I really love this scripture. Uh, I've used this several times over the years in ministry and in Wednesday night Bible studies, how we've kind of um, looked at the questions that are in number 13 and, and how we would respond in that. Uh, but it is really unique as we, as we start this morning. You see, uh, the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land uh, that I'm giving you. And then from each ancestral tribe, send one of us leaders. And so that's the, the concept of the direction we're moving this morning. Um, it is a little bit different than I usually use it as. Where usually I focus more on the, the questions and how, how the individual, maybe you, would respond. And this morning we're going to look at how the actual men that went out and explored the promised land, uh, what they responded as. And so we see the questions this morning. This is from Numbers chapter 13, 18 through 20. So right down in your scriptures there. Uh, Moses uh, told them to to take some leaders from each one of the tribes. And as they were to take these leaders, they had these questions that they wanted the men to go out and to look at and see and then report back to them what they saw. Now these questions are great. They're on Facebook. If you have Facebook, you can look at them. We talked about them Wednesday night. I'm kind of surprised. Uh, several of you were on Bible study Wednesday night, and I really thought you might bring some fruit in uh, from uh, what we talked about on Wednesday night. But I don't see any. Um, so I'm going to assume that, that you didn't follow orders very well. Uh, so anyway... Uh, in these questions, this is what Moses uh, instructed the leaders of these tribes to, to do. He said, see what the land is like. And these questions are really uh, individualized because he didn't say, you know, this is what the land is. Uh, tell me what you see there. He's really just saying, from, from your heart and your mind, I want you to tell me what the land is is like now you're, you're headed to the promised land well the people live there are strong or weak few or many what kind of land do they live in is it is it good or is it bad and what kind of towns do they live in are they are they unwalled like camps or are they walled and fortified and then how's the soil is it fertile or is it poor? And are there trees in it or not? And the last thing he said, not as a question, but as a statement, he said, do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. On Wednesday night, I've used this, and, and at the end, I've always told them to, to do their best to bring back some fruit of the land, whatever that is. Um, and during Bible study, I've had a lot of people... Uh, say, well, uh, what are these questions about, you know, uh, what kind, how strong or weak? Or, it's the individual's response. How, how you view it, what you see. And that's really what Moses wanted from the leaders as they went across. At, at this point in the scripture, you know, uh, Moses, their, their leader, had a, had a plan in mind that he was going to send these 12 tribes into Canaan, into the promised land, and, and gather this report, uh, which was really, they were on kind of like a, a reconnaissance mission. Uh, they were to go over and not make a lot of contact with the people that were there, but they were to go in and, and spy out the land, kind of answer these questions, and then after 40 days, they were to come back and report not only to their tribe, but to the nation of Israel as a whole. And so that, that's where Moses was at. He asked him to just report back on these questions. I'm sure a lot of them had questions for Moses, but that was it. This is, we're sending you out now on this mission. So Moses wanted to know about this land of Canaan. 
the land that God was, was sending them to, what's it, what's it like? What will it, what will it be like? What's it going to be like when we get there and, and live? And so have you, ever, have you ever planned to go somewhere that you've never been before? You know, it's really unique today because you can look it all up on your phone or your computer at home. You can Google it. Um, last year, for the, for the final time, we had our last four little girls at home. We were going to do something on spring break. Uh, in the past years that I can remember, uh, we went to see my dad uh, on spring break. That's what we, that's what we did. And so the girls got to see him and and be a part of his life, and since he's, he's passed, this was really the first year that we didn't do that on spring break. And so the girls were like, how about if we, how about if we just go somewhere? And I said, that's a really good idea, but, but we don't have many, money to go anywhere, because if you want to go on vacation in the summer, uh, we can't do them both. So then they come back and they said, what if we pay, will you take us somewhere on spring break? And like any good father said, I'm in. If you're paying, I'm driving, right? I mean, uh, mama didn't raise no dummy. Uh, she said, uh, you, you know, if, if you're going to pay for this, I'll take you wherever you want to go. And they said, okay. So in our house, we, for years, we've had these pictures of the, these mountains. Uh, and I'll, I'll be honest, for the last 31 years probably, I thought they were in North Carolina. I found out they're in Wyoming. Uh, I never really researched it. I just saw the picture. You know, we, it was pretty, so we had it. And, and so these were the Grand Tetons, right? So they're in Wyoming. The girl said, let's go there. And I said, remember, you're paying. I'll go anywhere. I mean, I'm, I'm in this thing. I'm in all. And they said, okay. And so, so for months then, uh, you know, January and February, we're, we're looking up stuff about Wyoming, and we're all excited, and, and you've, you're only going to be there, you know, this short window of time. So what can we do in that amount of time with, you know, the money we've got and the places to go, and, you know, what can we see? And, and so that was all, uh, we were just anticipating all these things. And, and so one of them would come up one day and said, look at this, you know, look, look at what's going on there. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun, you know. And so they started making notes and, and writing things down about what we could see while we were there. And, and, and granted, uh, when we went, we, we knew that we might not ever go back there again. Not that we wouldn't want to. It's just, you know, that's not, uh, that's not the direction that we usually go anywhere and, and cost-wise. So this was a, a kind of a one-and-done type of maybe thing that we did. So we wanted to make sure to do everything that we could in the amount of time. And, and so we really did. We, um, we took walks in the snow. We took uh, some... Uh, little roller coaster ride things in the in the, on the hills of the the snow slopes. We saw uh, moose. We saw antelope. We saw elk. We saw the mountains. Um, uh, all kinds of things that was there. It was really really unique time. But when we got there, we were already excited because we knew what was there, right? So that's the concept I want you to see. And so so Moses, as he's sending these spies in. That's really his directive. I want you to go in and report back on these questions, what's there? This is the land that God has given us. And so it's going to be so exciting when we get there, right? And, and so let's just know what's there. And so when Moses sends them off, that's really what he's expecting to get in return. Kind of a, a, a mini... Uh, cell phone adventure for 40 days that they went in that they would bring back. And so to really understand what's going on here at this point in number 13, we have to back up to Genesis chapter 12. And in Genesis chapter 12, we see the Lord calling Abram. Several weeks ago, we kind of come through that. We were a part of Abram's life. Uh, Abram was an idol worshiper. He was not a God follower. Uh, in the midst of his life, uh, his father had just passed away. Uh, things were changing rapidly in Abram's life. And the Lord says to him, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land that I will show you. So God wasn't telling him where he was going. He's just telling him, if you follow me, I'll lead you there. 
And so that's where we were in the beginning. And so um, we, we, we've seen that. God called him to, to leave his people, his father's household, and the land. And so they're in Haran. And so God leads and, and directs Abram to the promised land in Canaan. And so that's actually where Abraham was. Abram at this point, but Abraham was. Now, Abram was a, uh, a stranger in the land. That wasn't where they stayed, but that's where he told them, one day, your people are going to live and dwell here. And when they do, they're going to live and dwell here forever. This is it. This is exciting. And so over the generations then, they would tell them from one generation to the next, to the next, and to the next, about God's promise. It's coming. God promised that he would, he would give us that land. And so one day he's, he's going to. You fast forward about 220 years from the time that um, Abram is called to leave Haran and go to the promised land. And through that time we've seen, uh, if you were here at Christmas, you saw uh, Tim and Wendy and the kids read the Christmas story. We saw all the different uh, characters come through, right? And uh, through that, we saw Isaac. So Isaac was the, the son of promise that was born to Abraham and Sarah. And then from Isaac, then we saw Jacob. And so Jacob, then, his name has changed to Israel. And Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. About 220 years or so into this, uh, they've left, they're back out. Uh, they know where they're going. They keep telling their generations about what's going to happen. Uh, through a series of events that we looked through this past several weeks, Joseph, one of uh, Jacob's son, uh, through a series of events uh, where his brothers didn't like him, he ends up in, in Egypt. And then he rises to power. He's back. He rises to power. He's out. He rises to power. And then they understand because of the dreams that had taken place that there was going to be a famine in the land. And so Egypt then starts to store the grain so they would have enough to get through this famine that was coming. So there's a famine in the land. Jacob, who is not there, they think the son is lost. If you know the story, um, sends a couple of his sons over to find some grain. They find it. It's in Egypt. And then in the end, they find that it's uh, Joseph that has rose to power. Uh, Jacob, about 70 of them come over. They're living in Egypt. Okay, uh, Joseph is there. Pharaoh is there. Joseph is the right-hand man to the Pharaoh. Uh, they're living there. Then, as you continue to go, about 400 and some years later, family has grown now immensely. Pharaohs have changed a couple different hands, and now there's a new Pharaoh in town. This new Pharaoh looks around, and he sees all the Israelites, and he realizes there's a bunch of them. And if they revolt, they're liable to be able to take over Egypt and rule it on their own. So he makes a decree to have all the male children put to death. Moses' mother comes up pregnant. She gives birth to, lo and behold, a, a son. She hides him as long as she can. She puts him in the, the Nile River in a little basket. He floats down in this basket, and lo and behold, the Pharaoh's family find him. Oh, what a cute little baby. Because it's theirs now, they bring him into the palace, and Moses is raised in the palace. God's provisional, sovereign hand. So at this point now, Moses did rise up to power in, in Egypt as well. And he starts to look and he sees his people being oppressed and he can't take it anymore. And through a series of events, he's out. He's, he's gone. He's out into the wilderness. And that's when he meets God in the burning bush. He God said, I want you to go back and I want you to tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses said, oh, you're not understanding the situation here, I don't think, God. Because Pharaoh uh, doesn't like me and he doesn't uh, like people telling him what to do. And actually now the... People who, the Israelites who had went in at one point with Jacob and living in freedom are now living in slavery. 
And he's using all of the Israelites to do all of his work for free. God said, yeah, I know, but I want you to go tell him to let my people go. So after a series of events, Moses goes back. He tells the Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh says, no. That's where we find the plagues. Each one of the plagues were uh, uh, after one of the gods that Egypt would worship. The final one is the death angel. Uh, the death angel comes through, sweeps through the, uh, the whole land of Egypt, kills all the firstborn except those that had the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and the lintel. Finally, the Pharaoh said, you can go. They, they leave. They leave Egypt with all their goodies and all the stuff they have. They're heading towards the promised land. They get to the Red Sea, and lo and behold, it's in front of them, and the Egyptian army is coming after them in the back. God says, I'm going to part the Red Sea. And so he parts the Red Sea. They walk through on dry ground. When the Egyptian army comes through, they collapse. The walls collapse, the water, and annihilates the Egyptian army. Now the Israelites are on the other side. That's a fast forward several chapters, right? So all of a sudden now they're in here, they're heading to the promised land, this land that God had promised to give them in their forefather Abraham. Again, this story is passed down from generation to generation, and so they they know here, they understand this at this point. This is the land that God had told Abram to go to, and one day the whole Israelite nation would reside and dwell there in the presence of God. And so that's, that's where we're at now in the story. We're on the verge of, of entering into the promised land. Man, aren't you excited? They're so excited about uh, getting to this place. No, they're kind of grumbling about how it took to get there, and what's going on, and, and why did you bring us out here in Egypt? We could have died in Egypt as well as out here. And, and so they weren't really faithfully following God's call in their life. Even though now they're on the verge of entering into this promised land. So here goes the story that we're at now in Numbers chapter 13. Moses calls leaders, because God had said that, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving. God is giving this land to the Israelites. You've got to really ingrain that in your mind because it's going to come back in just a little bit. And so you're going to use one, one from each of the ancestral tribe to send out its, its leaders. So these men that were chosen were not just nobodies. They're not just run-of-the-mill average Joes. No offense to Joe. They're not just, a, a, just an average Joe. These are leaders of the tribes. So the 12 tribes, they make up the whole nation of Israel. And so these 12 tribes then kind of separate in their own 12 little groups and they pick the top guy from their whole tribe. The, the leader of leaders, right? He's the cream of the crop. And they're saying, okay, Kyle, we're picking you, buddy, because you were David. You get to go. We're going to, as a nation of North Baptist, we're going to send you into the land. And he's like, I can do this thing. And I'm doing it for you, not for myself. So, so that's where we're. These, these men are, are hand-selected. Okay? They're not just, uh, just, okay, flip a coin, the last one loses. No, these were, these were the ones that were chosen to go. They wanted the best. And so these men not only represent their tribe, they represent the whole nation of Israel. These people had been in captivity in Egypt for 400 years. They were just released by God's provisional hand. He he not only leads them out of Egypt, he leads them through uh, the Red Sea on dry ground. They saw the Egyptian army be swallowed up by the waters. They're on their way to the promised land, and and now they're on the verge of this promised land. And so, again, I tell you that uh, from generation to generation, it would have been passed down over and over and over and instilled in their hearts and their minds that this promised land is what God 
is giving us. He has chosen this land. He has chosen this people. And that's what he's given. And so they're on the, the threshold of a whole new life. It's kind of like when you walk out that door today, there's a threshold. And as soon as you step out, you're in a new land. And that's where they were. This is an exciting time for the people. What they've heard about all over these years is now about to take place. They were just excited. What could they say? And they were going into the land of Canaan, which God said, I am giving to the Israelites. I am giving this to you. So they went out, they, they spied out the land for 40 days, they explored everything on this reconnaissance mission, they had those questions. Now maybe they didn't have a tablet, maybe they just etched them into their brain, or, but they had these questions that they were supposed to answer as they came back. So they go in and they, they look and they check things out and they maneuver across the land. And in everything they did, they wanted to make sure that when they came back, they brought an accurate report. They wanted to just be as thorough as they could on this investigation. So when they came back, they were giving you, right, the facts. The facts only. That's all that mattered. And that's what Moses wanted them to bring. And so that, that's where they were, this accurate report. As they start to come back, it's been 40 days. I'm sure all of Israel was kind of looking, waiting on these men to come back. And on the, after the 40 days to come, they look at, oh, look, there, there they come. And so the whole nation would have come out there and they were looking. And, and, and it was awesome because, you know, see these grapes? These are about the size of the ones you get at Walmart or Price Shopper, right? Big? In comparative to small ones, right? But as they look, there's these two guys, and they've got a they've got a pole stretched between them, and on this pole is a cluster of grapes that are like this big. Man, can you can see Moses, man? He's like grinning from ear to ear. He's like, "Whoa, dude, look at that! This is what we're getting. This is where we're going." This is exciting. And so they're coming in. They're just coming in. And, oh, man, the tribes would just be, oh, God. Hug, hug, like group hugs. You know, man, look, we're so glad you guys are back. This is awesome. And look at the fruit that you brought back. It, it's great. That's where we are in verse 13, chapter 13, verse 27. They said, we went into the land. No, back. No, you jumped ahead of me. Now they all saw it already. We went into the land. The land you sent us. And it does flow with milk and honey, just like God said. Just like God said. Here's the fruit. And man, they're, they're holding these grapes that are huge. And so people are, whoa, man. That's our land. This is great. And that's when 28 happens. But. The land is flowing with milk and honey. Oh, it's great. But. And I, I kid you not, that is the biggest word in Scripture. So I made it really big so you would see that this morning, right? So it's the biggest word in Scripture. But really, I believe that is the biggest word in the English language. But. I loved my uh, freshman, sophomore English teacher. She said, and as I, as I wrote, she said, never use that word. When you write, never use that word. And so I learned to write without using that. But, well, we, but we use it all the time, right? So it's kind of hard. It makes you think. But the land is flown with milk and honey. Just like God said, the fruit is huge. It's amazing. But. And so all of a sudden, you would know that the 
demeanor of the whole people, it, it just changed. They were excited because they saw what was coming in. The guys had come back after 40 days. Leaders, remember, these were not just regular men. These were the leaders of the tribes. And they come back and they said, but, but. When a man uses that word today, it means that it's either impossible or I just don't want to do it. Okay, that, that's mankind, not just men, but that, that, that's true. When you use the word but, you either mean it can't be done or I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. You want to go fishing with me? Sure, but I, yeah, the weather's kind of bad outside. Okay, you want to go or not? Well, no. But. But when God uses that word, it means... The impossible is about to become possible. You can't do it, but I can. You can't take the land of Canaan, but I can. You can't have a baby without a father, but I can. You can't live a perfect life, but I can. You can't die and get your way into heaven, but I can die for you. All through the scriptures, we see mankind can say, but, and it really just means, I, I don't want to. It scares me. But when God says it, it means it's going to happen. This is it. And so that's where they were at. I love that song, uh, uh, Waymaker. Uh, God is the way maker, right? The ultimate promise keeper. The light in the darkness. What God means the impossible has just became possible. And so I want you to think of yourself this morning. How many times have you used that word for nothing more than just an excuse? But. God, I can't do it. I hear what you're saying, but I'm not capable. I don't talk well enough. I don't, I'm not physical enough. I don't this. I don't that. I don't. So here, here's the thing. The consensus was 12 of the 12 spies said the land is flowing with milk and honey. Look at the fruit that's over there. That's what they said. But then 10 of the 12 spies said, even though it does, we can't take it. Their people are huge. Their cities are walled. Their armies are immense. It's crazy out there. It's so crazy that I, that I feel like, Scripture says, a grasshopper. And I love that every time I think of that, uh, Bugs Life, anybody ever watch Bugs Life? Grasshoppers are mean to them littler bugs. Every time I think of grasshoppers, E.V. Hill, he was uh, a great uh, southern uh, African-American pastor that I saw at Promise Keepers one year, and he was talking about kind of the same Scripture. And he says, grasshoppers, grasshoppers. We looked like grasshoppers to him. And, and we did. But if you saw Bugs Life, grasshoppers can do a lot when they bind together. And so God had commanded Moses to send these 12 spies, these 12 men, these 12 leaders from the tribes of Israel into the land to get a report to bring back. Now, if you wrote down or think back or look in your verse 18 to 20 there, in none of those questions did Moses say, how big is their army? He didn't say, how tall were they? He didn't say, how scared are you of them? The questions he asked was to go over and see what God had already done and was doing. 
not can you take them? Can you do it? And so he never said that. God was going to fight the battles. And we know that as you move on into the scripture, you see that, right? Jericho, uh, we've always laughed in our family about, you know, he's supposed to uh, go into Jericho and they, they, the walled city and they, they walk around at one time a day, quiet. But think about that for a minute. I can hear noise from just around the corner here. And the whole nation of Israel was to go in and walk around Jericho quietly. That in itself would have been a chore. There's, we, have, we have four little girls in our household. I'm not sure quiet is in their vocabulary. Quiet. So when you say quiet, what do, you, do you mean like just like lower my voice to a quiet? Or do you mean... And so, so to think the whole nation of Israel was to go around there one time without saying anything. They had to follow God's orders by faith. And they're thinking, why do we got to do this, Dad? And why can't we talk when we're doing this? You know, talking is one of my favorite things, right? And so they had to be quiet. They went, and then on the seventh day, then they got the hoop and holler and they went around it seven times. And what happened? The wall came down. What did they do? Nothing except follow God's decree. All they had to do, the promised land was, was right there. All they had to do was go in, bring the report back, so that then they could go in and see God fight the battles. But they didn't. But God, right, Long before, God had promised the Israelites the land of Canaan. And he told them he was going to give that as their own. And he assured them total victory. So one of the things they would have passed down from generation to generation was that not only that God is promising us that land out there, he's going to give it to us. And in Exodus 23, 23, God said, My angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of all the Ites, right? The Ite family. The Amorites, the Hittites, the Pezzarites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. All those Ites were out there. Uh, and so when the spies, the leaders, these men went into the land, they saw all these Ites. And them Ites were pretty scary. And that's what scared them. It wasn't the grapes that scared them. It wasn't the produce, it was the ites. But God had already said, if you follow me, I will wipe the ites out. They weren't supposed to do it. God was. They were supposed to, by faith, follow and trust God in what he said. You know, you can fast forward about 4,000 years or whatever it is to today, and it, it hasn't changed. God is not telling you to go out there and fight that battle. He's, going, he's telling you to go out by faith and pick the fruit that God has already supplied. That's where you say, amen. The spies' mission to the promised land revealed where their hearts really were. What they were really saying was, that land is flown with milk and honey, but I don't really believe God is going to let us have it. That land's flown with milk and honey, but I don't think we can do it. That land's flown with milk and honey, but whoa, have you seen the size of those people? And really, what they were saying was, I'm trusting in, in me. I'm not really trusting in, in God. And so the theme of this message this morning is, is it's rebellion. And so rebellion is when I takes over. It's what I will, it's what I want, and it's what I'm going to do. And when that takes over, faith is not in the same picture as 
I wills and I wants and I'm going to do. God is not asking us to do that. He's asking us to, by faith, follow him into a land that he's, he's promised. That, that's where it is. And so as a result of their rebellion, which is sin, now this is interesting, God said, okay, if you don't want to go where I'm telling you to go, then a whole generation is going to pass away. If you don't want to go, they said, why did you bring us out here to let us just die in Egypt, in this land? Couldn't you just left us back there where we were? God said, okay, if that's what you really want, you're going to get it. That whole generation, except for Joshua and Caleb, the two who brought back the report that said, yeah, that land's flowing with milk and honey. Dude, pack your stuff because we're going. But the other ten said, but we can't do that. And so as a whole, they kind of took a hold of the ten that by faith weren't choosing to follow God. And God said, okay, then your whole generation except for Joshua and Caleb are going to pass away right here in this land. And when you're all dead... We're going to move ahead. And with Josh and Caleb, we're going to move into the promised land. And that's exactly what happened. By faith, it revealed their hearts. They weren't really trusting in God. They were trusting in themselves. So we need to really be careful what we say because sometimes God will give you exactly what you say and when you get it, you might realize that isn't really what you wanted. God will never lead us where his grace cannot provide for us. He will never take us to a place that his power has not already went ahead and provided. So their failure to believe in God by faith kept them from entering into the promised land. Here's what I want to tell you today. Things haven't changed in all those thousands of years. Then God spoke. Now God speaks through his word. And by faith we trust his word. And so we're headed today for a, a promised land. Amen. And the only way you're going to get to that promised land is by faith in God's word. Jesus said I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So we're either going to, by faith, trust his word to take us into the promised land. Or we can choose not to. And so I pray this morning that whether you're in here or on Facebook that you're listening and you're hearing this word, that, that you have trusted God as your personal Savior. Just because Jesus was born just because he walked upon this earth, just because he did the miracles that he did, just because he went to the cross and died, and just because he rose from the grave doesn't mean that we automatically enter into the promised land. Because he did those things, that means that we now have an opportunity to choose the grace that God is giving us in Jesus. It's a choice. And so I pray that your choice is that you will accept him as your Lord and Savior, that you will allow him to transport, transform your life. And the but will be gone. Now I want to encourage you this week. If you're writing something, don't use that word. If you're saying something, don't use that word. See how many times you actually use that word this week. And so if you're a, if you're a family unit, if you're together, I want you to keep track of your brothers and sisters. Of your parents, of your children. See how many times we use the word, but. And see if we can stop using that 
and my faith move forward to see what God has really wanting to do. See, here it is. Right outside that door is the promised land. Right as you step out through the doors into a, over that threshold into a new world, that's the world that God has promised to give those by faith. And so my question then for you is, are you ready to take possession of the land? Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for forgiveness. Lord, I thank you for your power. I thank you for your sovereignty. I thank you this morning that you loved us and didn't want to leave us where we were. Lord, I thank you that through Jesus we're heading to a whole new destination. And just as we can look at our computers or our phones or all those things and, and look into some some new heights of of physical places we can go, Lord. We can look into your word this morning and see what's ahead. And all those battles that we've tried to fight and to compete in are not our battles. They're yours. And so, Lord, as we leave this place this morning, I pray that you would allow us to, to leave those battles here. As we step out into the world, that we step out into your grace and your goodness. And Lord, we will see the, the fruit. Lord, you called us to bring it in. To pick it. Lord, help us to see it. Help us to trust you by faith. Lord, again, this morning I thank you for those that have, have chosen to get out in this weather. Lord, I thank you for those that have gained and, and, and joined with us on Facebook. And Lord, this morning, we, we give you praise. We offer these things to you because, Lord, you really are a good, good father. You love us. You want the best for us. And if we'll just follow you by faith, Lord, we'll, we'll find it. And so, Lord, help us, guide us and direct us. Lord, help us to turn to you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you stand this morning, we're going to sing, What a Day That Will Be. Man, what a day that will be, right? How exciting is that?
that. And it, it is for me. And, and the greatest thing for me is that I love you guys so much that I want you to be there. So I'm bringing you a good report this morning. And there are grapes this big. Right? God has already went before. So I'm going to be Joshua and Caleb, one of the two. I want you to be there. And if you're not there, man, then we've just not done what needs to be there. We've we, we got to get you to that place. And if you're there, hey, let's get excited because the grapes are big. Amen? Amen. Man, God has provided. He is fighting the battles that he wants to go before us. And so that's where we need to follow him. Hey, the final thoughts this morning is uh, uh, don't forget Bible study Wednesday night. Again, the books are up here. Uh, we'll have book threes out next week. Uh, it, it just continues to to build and to grow. And, you know, you could even bring some fruit back next week. Now, fruit is what you see it as. Maybe it might be the fruit of your neighbor, the fruit of the one you work with, the one you go to school with, the one that lives down the block. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately for all you, these are not real, so do not eat the grapes this morning. Okay? These are plastic. Darn, right? But bring some fruit back. That, that's what we're supposed to be about. This morning, we always give you an opportunity to, uh, to take part in the ministries here. Uh, you can do that through uh, giving through the LifeWay by Generosity app. You can give that, and you can do that through um, coming in, uh, dropping it off in the offering plate while you're here. You can do that through uh, mailing a check to the church, putting attention lend on it. It all gets to the same place. And, and it, it's exciting because as the fruit continues to grow here, those ministries that we're a part of are blessed even more. And so that's, that's what it's exciting about it. So anyway, we, we give you that opportunity. Uh, we're going we're gonna to close by singing, I've decided to follow Jesus, one verse, and then I'm going to pray and you can be dismissed. Be careful going to your car, be careful going home, but do not use that one word this whole week. And I won't even tell you what it was because it was the biggest word you know, right? Okay. All right. I've decided to follow Jesus. presence with us. Lord, we thank you for your sovereign hand. And Lord, even in the world of chaotic mess that we live in, you are in control. Amen. Lord, help us to focus on you, not our fears. Focus on you, not the things that this world has to offer. Lord, I pray for peace among each one uh, this morning, the peace that resides and comes only from you. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Lord, this morning I pray that as we step out into the threshold of this new world that you've given us, Lord, we, we see it with your eyes and not ours. Lord, we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.